Here it is. I couldn't... Man, getting this to capture was annoying. So, it's me again. Another one of these games that Noah gave us a bunch of years back. The one billion rupee girl. I don't know about you, but you know, I like my girls to have less rupee than that. That seems like a grand excess of rupee. Like, you know, like a million maybe, but like ten, but like, yeah, one billion? God. It's too much rupee. Ah. Uh, okay. English is what I'm gonna choose. Cause that's the language I speak. But now, now I get it. Yeah. It's... You reap what you sow. Look, man. I'm doing my best. You reap what you sow. Those words mean nothing to me. Because some people out there are now reaping what I had sown before. Damn them! They leave nothing for me. Curse those ungrateful people! Sometimes, it's hard not to agree with people who bellow, the world is not fair. However, it's exactly what I'm experiencing right now. The world is only fair to certain privileged people whom I need to meet with, a pr with prim clothing, nice perfume, and promising looks. To me, this world is full of conspiracy. The rich become richer as the poor become poorer. Ah, and it would be better if this world ceased to exist. Slamming the keyboard with my fingers, I continue to contemplate the line of thought in my own mind. The small room was full of employees, as well as cigarette smoke. Hardly an ideal place for work. The place was so cramped that working here f feels like hell. The air conditioner was off. The fact illustrated my workplace condition in a nutshell. The company was trying to cut expenses here and there to expand. Thanks to that, only the management could team got a room with working air conditioner and above all that our salary was lower than the minimum wage for the region well then it's illegal right truly a perfect hell oh come on quit your whining seven no matter how much you complain this is better than being unemployed the one who said that was mr joko my senior who has worked for a full 10 years in this hellhole I failed to understand why he'd continued working in this place for such a long time. I don't know any other place is to work in. An elementary school graduate like me is, like, is lucky to be able to work here and I should be grateful for it. And that's his side, side of the story. The owner of this company was his friend. Ha. Ah, Indonesians. They always feel lucky at everything. Yes, but I want to get a better job than this one. But with this recession and all, being able to keep your job without getting fired is quite a feat. So... I thought this was all Indonesian? I, I guess I'm confused. I told him that will loose, loosen to my tie. Ah, whatever. Good luck finding a job then. And that's how our conversation ended, with empty encouragement for my colleague. Um, oh, okay, my keyboard ceased to function, so I'm going to plug it in, I guess, I just charged it not too long ago, God, if I have to get another one,
Oh, where seven? What's the matter, sir? I quickly stood up as I answered him. I had a bad feeling about this, really bad. Why do you make? Why did you make Sarah do your work? Huh? I beg your pardon, sir. Don't harm me. You forced her to do your work, right? I impossible. I've been working on it since morning. After I finished, I gave it to Sarah, and I started working on my next assignment. Ah, now I understand. I found one more cons conspiration that needs to be added to my list. Conspiracy to frame me. Boss, I told the truth. Seven forced me to finish his work. You lied. I didn't force you or anything. I did all that without your help. I only asked you to submit it to the boss, and now you're here saying all this blasphemy? Curse that wench! Sarah is one of the employees that worked in this infernal room. However, her activity every day includes going to shopping malls and forcing us to do her share of the workload. And like any typical wench, she seduces the boss with her sexy body and pretty face. What a jerk! <laughs> No, I don't want to hear any of your excuses. Now this is your time to do Sarah's work. This is your punishment. Don't ever think to become a hoodlum here. Are you not satisfied with this work? Do you want me to fire you? No, no sir, but stop your whining and start working. <laughs> In the end, I surrendered. Now I am working on two people's workload with, with the same pay. Soon the boss went out, leaving me, Joko, and Sarah alone. Joko started reading his favorite football magazine that he had hid when the boss came. Hi, sorry, Seven. I'll go out for a while. Okay. Do me a favor and kill yourself, jerk. <laughs> Hang on. Let me just adjust here. Go ahead and kill yourself, jerk. <laughs> what? I gave her a blunt response as I continued typing with 120 speed of light. Okay. What? You mad? If not, then I must be crazy. Ah, uh, don't worry. I'm gonna give you a present later. Why don't you stop at the hotel later? Hmm? Sarah tried to seduce me by stroking my hair. Get away from me. You stink. Ugh, if you keep that attitude, you won't get a girlfriend. Oh, but I do and we will meet later. Now go kill yourself, you witch. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Who wrote this? Let's break up. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost late meeting her, all thanks to the extra workload. My sweat hadn't dried after a quick suffocating run. I was almost late meeting her, all thanks to the... I oh, wait. Could have sworn today's April Fool's Day. Uh, uh, but, but why? Look, he looks like he's in the gorillas down there. I ain't happy. I'm feeling glad. We were really, we were in a really good turn lately. And now she said she wants to break up. Is Bali going to have a snowstorm? Okay. Well, you're quite handsome, but that alone is not enough. It's a shame you don't have money or else I would, I would have wanted, wouldn't have wanted to break up with you. Obviously. I mean, just have money. Because of that. Yeah. Because of money. But of course, by the way, I've already got myself a new boyfriend. It feels really nice sitting on his convertible car. 
After a few moments, a stylish guy appeared and approached us. I noticed the key he was holding in his hand. Probably the key for his convertible. His hair was messy, yet dashing. His face hair and weight makes me think that his physical appearance is flawless. I am nothing compared to this guy, both appearance-wise and money-wise. You done, honey? Yeah, let's go. After that, they got into a Mercedes-Benz S-Class, which is parked near our meeting place. As if mocking me, the car passed me with a very subtle sound. I still couldn't move, trying to process the facts. I've been dumped. She said I'm quite handsome. But my wallet is dry. So in the end, it's all about money? Curse that girl! Give me back all my money! Shit, shit, shit! That girl will pay! After all I've done to please you, now you've dumped me because you found another man that can give you a comfy ride? No, wait, in this situation, I have to think positively. Positive, 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 positive. That's right, now I'm free from that blood-sucking woman. That must be the path that God wants me to take. He did not want me to be manipulated by that woman. Ugh, now what? Still emotional. I read that message that just came in. Mr. Seven, your sister didn't come to school for three days without leaving a message. Did something happen to her? Great. One problem after another. My sister always greets me every morning before she goes to school. Now her teacher told me she didn't come to school three days in a row. I told my sister as fast as I can. Snake. No answer. Damn. Hey. I look to the source of the voice that I feel familiar. There's no mistaking it. It was my father's voice. I'm sorry to hear you got dumped. My dad told me that apathetically with a straight face. He didn't care about me. Not even a little. Wait, did he saw everything? Dad, why are you here? From the look of it, everything's happening coincidentally. I want to sell something. He opens his coat, and then the inventory screen comes up. What do you want to sell? A cell phone. <laughs> cell phone? My father has a cell phone? When? <laughs> That's sketchy as fuck. What the hell? It's like... <laughs> hey, man. I found a cell phone. You want it? <laughs> From what I remembered, he wasn't technologically savvy. He didn't even even know how to change a television channel. There's no way he can use advanced things like cell phones. It's your sister's. Huh? Why do you want to sell it? I'm short on cash now. Give it back. What? Never! I just gave you the money yesterday, Dad. Where did they go? I'm not accepting some bogus reason like the money being eaten by goats. I lost a bet yesterday. It's much worse. Give it back right now. Wacky music time. I tried to corner my dad and tried to grab my sister's cell phone. I remember the first time my sister asked me for a cell. She begged so cutely that I gave up lunch for a whole week and saved enough money to buy a cell phone for her birthday. And now this failure of a dad is going to sell it to go gambling? Well, tough luck, bud, over my cold, dead body. So, let's be generous and say that your lunch is about 10 bucks a day. You, you splurge, you know? Um, so, seven days. Well, a work week is, we'll say a whole week. So, so, 70 bucks is what you saved for the cell phone. Which sounds a little more reasonable back in like 2009 or whatever. When like... They were like flip phones and shit, but man, try getting a try getting a new cell phone now with seventy bucks. Woof! Shut up, get away. Though some people had started to slow their steps and watch a father or son fight over a cell phone, I didn't give a damn. Your sister's the one who wants the soul. And just like that, my brain stopped sending impulse to attack. Then the only word I could utter was. 
Huh? Her boyfriend bought her a new one. She said to me, here, sell this. If you win, don't forget the treat. No way. So there, stop bothering me. After getting rid of me, who was just obstructing his way, he left. <laughs> this guy just gets fucked every step of the way. Where was my sweet and innocent little sister go? Why didn't she change like that? When she, when she was little, she always kept my gifts carefully. She even cried when she lost it one time. Where is my sweet little sister go? Got swindled by a colleague. Broken up by my girl. Sister lost all respect for me. And just as usual, Dad can only gamble and suck money like the leech he is. Who should be blamed? Somewhere. 7 p.m. Without having anywhere to go, I kept walking in the midst of people I didn't know. I don't know. I thought about how meaningful my life is. I'm not sure... I'm sure no one is going to feel any loss if I die now. If I have to die, I have to die in a cool way. Huh? I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> like suddenly, a meteor fell out of the sky and I ram a plane chock full of explosives right into it. Boom. Instant hero. Dying because of an unpleasant atmosphere at work, got broken up by my girlfriend, fucked up family, and lack of money is totally ridiculous. All people in the world are going to laugh at me. My grandma once said that the world is just. People have their own problems, have their own merit, have their merits and lacks. No one is perfect. But why does everyone around me look happy? Damn. Ah, that's the secret. They're not. That's right. It's a conspiracy. It must be. No, it's all a conspiracy to make me commit suicide. Oh, God. Well, tough luck. I'm not going to kill myself over this. But whose conspiracy is this? I must find the culprit. As my mind wandered to God knows where, my body had suddenly unconsciously taken me to a small alley that I've never been to before. As if something was pulling me, I unconsciously thread the path until I saw a girl lying on the floor. Without thinking too long, I ran to her side and helped her. Ahoy! You alright? Water? Water? Uh, RP 3000 something bottled water. You're going to die, and you can still ask for something so ridiculous? Because I don't really want to play with someone's life, I ran as fast as a rabbit to the nearest stall. I returned to the scene a few moments later. Damn, I forgot to ask for the change. Here, drink. I urge you to drink carefully. Go, ah. Uh. You okay now? Yes. Good. After making sure that she was still alive, I left that place. I don't have any intention of asking her for reimbursement or things like that. Anyway, I'm too lazy to get involved with just another brat. I'm not a brat. I was silenced for a moment, remembering what had happened a few seconds ago. I'm sure I didn't say to the girl verbally about her being a brat. Sarah. Hmm? My name is Sarah. Oh, I'm seven. What's wrong with this girl? She ignored my question. The girl named Sarah looked... About my sister's age. Her hair was shoulder length. Her body was ideal enough. And I think she's quite cute. Ideal enough? So, Sarah, see ya. I don't have the time to be with a brat. Wait! What? I'm hungry. What the hell? Ain't my problem. Gah! I always gave up as her radiant, hopeful eyes won me over with sympathy. I'm always reluctant about getting into these kinds of situations, but I left her dying of hunger. That would mean the same as murdering her. I don't think so. And I don't know what the angel urges me. I strangely agree on carrying her. Her frail legs looked as if, as if it was going to break if she kept on walking alone. So I can't just tell her to follow me while being hungry like a villain. Her pale face, of course, added to the impression that she wasn't well. Hey, 
Yes? Where do you live? I don't have anywhere to stay. Parents? Don't have. I stopped asking for a while and tried to think of the questions to ask her. But for someone who doesn't have a home, parents, and almost died of hunger, Sarah is not suited to all these descriptions. In reality, her clothes and body is... Oh, shit. Uh, well, she's 16. Uh, oh, God. Ugh, why do I do this? Why? Anybody even like this? Does anybody does anybody watch this shit? Does anybody watch Basement Quality Date Night? Shut sound off if you do. And what are you doing here? <laughs> for the first time in a long time, I got the answer from the girl. She stopped talking for a while. Strange. She answered all my previous questions on the spot. After a while, I could hear her reply. Ah, uh, I want to eat some soda. Sarah, who is still on my back, pointed to a soda stall that can be seen at the other side of the road. He didn't even answer my question when I asked her the first time. Get down for a minute. No. Down. No. Down or else I'll drop you. Probably scared, she loosened her grip on my shoulders. After Sarah got off my back, I took, into, took a peek into my wallet. Okay, I got enough money to buy her a bowl of soda, but not enough for the two of us. Oh well, it's not like I'll die from hunger. Can you walk by yourself? No. It's hard to say whether she was lying or not. She's so expressionless. <clears throat> Why aren't you eating? Nah, I'll eat at home. Just finish your food. Is that so? Small lips were moving as she chewed. Uh, her little fingers were holding the spoon and fork with proper manner. Um, what is it? I can't finish this much food. He handed me the bowl. Finish it! But I'm full. Please finish it. I took her spoon and finished the soda. Ah. Now what? That was my spoon. Wacky music time. And so... Sarah looked down, blushing. She didn't say anything. I'm an adult, and a so-called indirect kiss doesn't mean anything to me. I stood up and took my wallet out. Ah, please, let me pay for it. Huh? Do you have any money? I have some. She put her hand into her pocket, rummaging through it. She took out the money, along with all of her pocket's contents. Finally, someone let me out of my cage. The contents were surprising. Ah, I dropped them. What are those? Dollar bills? Are you a tourist or something? Are those not enough? Pick them up now. I tried to pick up all the hundred dollar bills that had fallen out of her pocket. Just the sheer amount of the fallen bills along with the shiny green colors of the paper attracted people's stares and glances. I realized people were staring at us. What are you looking at? Mind your own business. Man, those people. Their eyes were shining when they saw the money. La la la. You're still singing at a time like this? Don't you have that bringing this? Don't you know that bringing this much money is dangerous? It's like you were wearing a big sign that says mug me on it. I suddenly noticed something. It was her passport, a debit card, and a piece of paper. Pick it up, quick! Oh, okay. I quickly paid and left the crowd. It'd be dangerous to stay. I decided that it's too dangerous to let her stay outside alone, so I brought her to my place. She didn't mind, it seemed. Hey, what? What is it? Please don't give me a pig. Please give me a piggy rack right again. No, I'm tired. Her eyes gave a twinkle that almost persuaded me to give her one. Don't give me that. I'm tired. Are we there yet? I didn't realize that we have arrived because I was too busy ignoring her. I was too busy not paying attention to something that I didn't pay attention to other things. Nice. The first thing I noticed was that my house was full of red paint and the windows were broken. The door was taken out from its frame. Maybe even war runes that would have looked better than this mess. 
I let out a sigh and entered the house. Well, I'm not even sure what you can call this a house anymore. <clears throat> How cruel. Nobody's home, thank goodness. Who did this? Probably some ex-friends of mine. As I answered, I took out the chair on my old TV and I put it back to where it was and told Sarah to sit. Ex-friends? Eh, yeah, I ran out of sugar. I'll just give you some water then. What do you mean by ex-friends? Well, they were my friends once, but not anymore. And it took me a while to find a glass that wasn't broken. The rest was shattered into pieces. So, did... I, I guess I missed that. Like, someone just rummaged through the house then? So where'd you get all that money? Have you ever heard of the K the Kapak gang? Kapak gang? Kapak gang? Yes. Kapak gang. I'm gonna go with that. I don't know if that's right. It sounds... Uh, it sounds like it could be right. I don't know. It's a major gang, well known by everyone. I prefer to call them mobsters, though they... They got more than 2,000 members nationwide, and of course, they have influence as well. Their notoriety was so infamous that one said you can even take a crap without their permission. <clears throat> Having both power and influence, this is one group that you must not want to mess with. That you would not want to mess with. I was one of them, but since I quit, people started doing all this stuff to me. Well, you can't make everyone happy. This is also the reason why I couldn't get a decent job. They don't let people walk away from them just like that. I don't want to live off, live off taking happiness from people. The fact that they always have a trump card to legalize their actions makes me sick. And of course, they have the brain to conspire. People fear them, especially common people. Now it's my turn to ask, what are you doing in the neighborhood? I take out her passport and the debit card and the piece of paper from before. May I see it? Sarah nods a little. The movement was so delicate that I almost didn't notice. In that blue passport, Sarah's full name is written. Is this really yours? She nodded. I took took a look at the latest balance. I knew it's rude, but I had to make sure of something. Zero, zero, zero. How many zeros are there? That was my parents' inheritance. Oh, I see. No, no, wait. What are they? Some kind of sheik from the Middle East? They were in this big business. I see. Okay. They were in a big business. Got it. Understood. I was confused. I didn't know what to do with this girl. But of course, the first thing I should do is return her to her guardian. Your, got your un uncle or aunt's number? <clears throat> I don't have any uncle or aunt. Got another relative or acquaintance I can call? She shook her head slowly. Do you go to school? No. I was homeschooled by my late mother. Whoa, so there's nobody I can call? Well, actually, I have someone in mind. Ah, give me the number then. But I don't know how to reach them. I stopped asking her. The girl was a stray, was a stray all right. No one cared for her. 